It is Halloween, so expect the unexpected. But a Notre Dame home game in Texas? This is the Alamo Dome in San Antonio where Notre Dame is about to play Washington State. And it has all the trappings of a game on campus. While there was no team walk from the Basilica to the stadium, but just about everything else. A Friday pep rally in front of the Alamo and plenty of activities for alumni and fans. The band of the Fighting Irish is here and the players will be attired in their home blue jerseys. Irish fans in Texas will get a first-hand look at Heisman hopeful Jimmy Clausen and his favorite target, Golden Tate, one of college football's top receivers. It's a Halloween treat from San Antonio. Center up for the ball, has a touchdown, Washington State, and he's at the goal line, a touchdown. Lawson finds it over Tate, Tate for the touchdown, this one is picked off, Brian Smith. So the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, where the 5-2 Irish beat the 1-6 Cougars, and from deep in the heart of Texas, here come the Irish. that this appearance in Texas gives a little boost to recruiting. Free game prayer. This concept of playing at a neutral site on a Notre Dame home game is something that will continue in the years to come. In fact, Next year, Notre Dame is going to play Army at the new Yankee Stadium. It's a chance to expose the university to different areas of the country, let the alums see a game. There are 4,500 Notre Dame alums that live in the state of Texas, and so it's something new that will be continued every year. This is our perch at the Alamo Dome, something new for us too, but glad to be with you in the beautiful city of San Antonio, and happy Halloween, Tom Hammond and Pat Hayden here with you. And the fans in Texas that come to the Alamo Dome tonight, Pat, will see one of the most dynamic passing duos in all of college football. You're absolutely right. Let's start with Golden Tate, the wide receiver. This guy has had an amazing year. He's played incredibly well every single game we've seen him play, and you know, he had two separate talents I think you have to worry about if you're a defensive coach. One is his ability to jump up in a crowd and with those real strong hands of his take the ball away. And the other one is he turns into a running back. He's very difficult to tackle after he makes that catch. Now, the guy who's been chucking it to him and had a pretty good year himself is Jimmy <laughs> Clausen. And, you know, you, you measure quarterbacks, I think, in a couple of ways, certainly by wins, but particularly wins when you come from behind. He's brought the Irish back four times in the fourth quarter for wins, 16 touchdowns, only two interceptions. No one has stopped these guys yet. And about to make their appearance here at the Alamo Dome are the uh, Cougars of Washington State University. And there they are in the tunnel and making their appearance for their second ever meeting against Notre Dame. The first one won by the Irish and South Bend in overtime. Here are the Cougars. Not really welcomed. <laughs> There is a little pocket of red plant yeah. Washington State fans in the corner, and there's their freshman quarterback, Jeff Toole. Well, Washington State has one of the worst pass defenses in the nation, so Jimmy Clausen and Golden Tate probably licking their chops, but the truth is Notre Dame is just about as bad in pass defense, and Jeff Toole passed against Cal last week for over 350 yards. Yeah, can you believe it? He is the fourth true freshman that Notre Dame defense has faced this year, but he has gotten better every week. This is his fourth start. You mentioned a Cal. Protected the football too, Tom. Two touchdowns, no interceptions, those 350 yards, but it's really hard to believe they put this much on him. This freshman quarterback is going to have to carry this team and really if they have any chance of winning whatsoever and in particular 
getting off to a good start. They've been terrible in the first half. Well, one thing for sure, good news for Alex Flanagan tonight. We're inside. You won't be wet tonight, Alex. Tom, the perfect weather for a sideline reporter. As you mentioned a few minutes ago, one of the purposes of this trip to Texas recruiting. Charlie Weiss has not been able to dip into the deep football talent pool of Texas the way he would like to. 30 uh, Players from 30 states on Notre Dame's roster, 17 from Illinois, 10 from Ohio, 9 from the state of Florida. Eight out of Pennsylvania, and then from California, another eight players on Notre Dame's roster, including Jimmy Clausen. But when you go to Texas, the football-rich state of Texas, only four recruits from Notre Dame out of Texas, and Notre Dame hoping that this exposure will help them change that. 38 recruits from the state are here at this game tonight, Tom, and it appears that their efforts are already paying off as they got a commitment from one of those recruits out of Houston last night. All right, Alex, and uh, the Irish and Charlie Weiss hoping for a win tonight on Halloween. They're 14 and 0 when they play on Halloween. From the home of the Alamo, Jimmy Clausen hopes to add to his Heisman credentials, and Golden Tate wants to give them something to talk about on the Riverwalk later tonight. Beautiful San Antonio on the right there, the Alamo Dome. That's where we are for the Cougars and the Irish. And Notre Dame has won the opening toss and elected to defer to the second half. So David Ruffer has it teed up and ready to kick it off for the Irish. And Tom, on Halloween, you expect anything from an opponent, right? It's particularly that's one and six. So Dwight Tardy and Carl Winston are the deep men for Washington State as Ruffer gets set to boot it away. From San Antonio. Carl Winston from about the six yard line. Winston hit hard as he crosses the 25 to the 26 yard line. This, of course, is an artificial surface here at the Alamo Dome. As Washington State will put it in play. And a look at Jeff Toole, who makes his fourth start. The freshman threw for 354 yards in defeat against Cal last week. And we talked about just getting off to a solid start. You know, uh, even just a few first downs. It just been, it hasn't been good in those first few series the last few weeks. Tools in the shotgun on first down from the 26. Went one way, went the other way, and Hunt Pursuit throws it, but it is incomplete, out of bounds. Made a nice adjustment, almost had Jeffrey Solomon for the reception, but could not get the one foot down. So our Adidas starting lineups for the Washington State offense. And their center, Kenny Alfred, a Fifth-year senior anchors that offensive line and tries to keep his freshman quarterback calm as well. The Cougars will start with three wide receivers. Karstetter is tops. He has 24 catches. Here's Tardy in it running back and gets the call. And a flag down as he crosses 25 back to the line of scrimmage. Ethan Johnson made the tackle and a hold. 54 offense. Another one of those things that have plagued the Cougars this year. Tom, last week they had 13 penalties for 114 yards. Paul Wolf, the head coach, former center for the Cougars in the 90s. So a hold against Washington State. Makes it second down and 20. To a rolling to his left end, delivering short of Solomon, who was open. Yeah, had him. And we talked to the uh, the coaches, Todd Sturdy, the offensive coordinator of Washington State this week, and said, hey, we've got to change the launch point of Jeff Tool. And that's kind of football talk for just getting your quarterback away from the rush. He's got a freshman left tackle, so he's going to roll into the into the wide side of the field. It really did have Solomon open. Would have been for a first down. In fact, it looked like Blanton fell down. Yeah, just did not get his shoulders turned. It's the toughest thing for a quarterback to do as he throws to the left. Rolling to his left. So third down. Third and long for the freshman Jeff Toole. Steps up in the pocket. It breaks down, so he runs for it and scrambling. 
Right back short of the 25-yard line where Kerry Neal tracks him down. There is a penalty flag. An illegal procedure on the Cougars. Illegal formation, number 74 offense. Penalty is declined, fourth down. That's on the freshman left tackle, Alex Reitnauer. The illegal formation, so a punting situation. Reed Forrest is the Washington State punter, averaging 43.8 yards a punt. He has been a bright spot for Washington State. And there's Golden Tate awaiting it. Tate calls for a fair catch. Great field position for the Irish on their first possession. That punt only covered 34 yards. So as if he needed a short field, Jimmy Clausen comes out for his first series. Clausen now with over 2,000 yards, those 16 touchdowns and only two interceptions. Outstanding. Yeah, it is incredible. You know, if you get a two to one or two or three to one inter the touchdown interception ratio is pretty good. He's been phenomenal. And I don't think the inter those two interceptions should have happened. Receivers fall this year. Fake and roll. Clausen pumps once, finds Kyle Rudolph as tight end, and Rudolph has the first down. Corralled about the 40-yard line into Washington State territory. Flag is down. 16-yard gain. After the play was over, personal foul, 55 offense, 15-yard penalty. It will be first down. Well, we're going to take so, it. Eric Olson with the uh, personal foul involved in a little altercation too at uh, Boston College after the Boston yeah, College game. Indeed. You know, Charlie Weiss is absolutely determined to get the ball to Kyle Rudolph today. Only one catch last week, three catches against USC. A guy who is the man in motion number nine, right on the right foot, as easy a throw as you can get. But you, he's going to be a big part of the Irish offensive plan tonight. Pretty hard for Jason Stripling to cover him. And the penalty wipes out a big game. So first down, drop play, Hughes. First down, and inside the 40-yard line. Well, even in San Antonio, they kind of give Robert Hughes <laughs> that huge call that gets at Notre Dame Stadium. And, you know, you throw the tight end once, and you give your ball, the, the ball to Robert Hughes getting the start for Armando Allen. 15-yard gain for Robert. Robert Hughes has really filled in for Armando Allen. Very, very capable. He has the longest run on the team at 37 yards this year. Hughes a little wobbly. On a goal line hit against Boston College, in fact, suffered a concussion, but ready to go tonight. Boston's pass with great protection, gets it to Golden Tate. Tate dancing, trying to get free, will be thrown back. Did have forward progress for the first down, tackled by Hayward and Stripling after a gain of 11. Adidas starting lineup for the Notre Dame offense, and that offensive line now has a combined 135 starts coming in. And, of course, uh, Armando Allen, as Pat, Pat said, is out. So Robert Hughes starts in the backfield. He's averaging four and a half yards a carry. Tate with 52 catches and eight receiving touchdowns. First down, Notre Dame inside the 30-yard line of the Cougars. From the shotgun, Clawson crossing to Rudolph. Rudolph carrying tackles with him, still not down. Finally, up to the turf at the 18. That's an 11-yard game. Notre Dame ripping off big chunks here early. Alex Hoffman Ellis the tackle. Yeah, well, he's such a big target, Tom. We talked about it. Number nine, the tight end, with those big hands like the size of small dogs his hands are. And just a simple little route, you know, clear out by the back allows him to just kind of come underneath. But uh, he is going to be a major factor today because he, they felt like they just haven't given him enough chances the last two weeks. James Aldridge in now fullback with Hughes the tailback. Caution hands to Hughes, Robert Hughes. Inside the Cougar 15-yard line. Gang tackled at that point. As we look at our Adidas starting lineups for the Washington State defense, that defensive line really banged up for the Cougars. Lewis Bland, the Cougars' best defender, is out, so Hoffman Ellis starts in his place, and in the secondary, Jones and Hicks with an interception each. Well, it's going to be a tough matchup for those corners. Haywood, a freshman, and Brandon Jones is 5'9". Pass is complete to Toma. Robbie Toma, the freshman with his third career catch. 
And knocked out of bounds by Wachiku. A nice block this time by Kyle Rudolph, who said he was going to be a part of the game plan. We certainly has receiver he's already been. Number nine puts the block in the defensive back to allow Toma a lot of running room. Toma's really come on the last couple weeks. was really on the scout team at the beginning part of the season, but Charlie Weiss had earned his way into the lineup. Freshman from Hawaii who came with Manti Teo, a highly touted linebacker. First and goal from the six. Hughes met at the five. Got it down to about the four-yard line. First to hit him, Hoffman Ellis, followed by Andy Mattingly. Yeah, good, good ta uh, tackle by Andy Mattingly, number 45, a guy with whom we spoke this week and uh, said he had this game circled on his right. uh, calendar for about a year. He has a lot of family from Indiana. He said they were all going to come. He said he, I wasn't sure they were going to wear Notre Dame gear or Washington <laughs> State gear. But uh, he's going to have a, a good matchup with Kyle Rudolph today. Second and goal, the ball at the four-yard line. Pitch to Hughes, hit in the backfield and fumbled. But Hughes was able to get back on it. It was Andy Manningly, I think, who came off the corner very quickly to cause that fumble. Great penetration by Manningly. Yeah. Right side of the line, you will see way over here on the right. And he, this is a guy that just uh, read the play perfectly. Caused a fumble. Stripped the fumble. Yeah. Not to strip the football. But. but, you know, you talk about luck of the Irish. They have only lost two fumbles all season long. They have really protected the football. And only five turnovers total. One of the best in college football in that. They have a plus ten. And there's a lot of guys back in coverage. For the end zone. Some bumping and incomplete intended for Duval Palmara. Incomplete. A good goal line stand by the Cougar, Cougar defense yeah, there. Brandon Jones receiving congratulations after yeah. he made the play on Camara. And two good plays by Andy Manley, the uh, the linebacker. So Nick Tausch, the Texan from Plano, Texas, is on to attempt the field goal. He's hit 12 in a row. This one will be from 28 yards. House with a big contingent here to see him play. And the field goal is good. That is 13 in a row. Not a bad number on Halloween. <laughs> For the freshman place kicker. And Notre Dame goes up 3-0 as House ties a record with 13 straight. MetLife is providing these views of the Alamo Dome and beautiful San Antonio, Texas. MetLife provides coverage of major sporting events while also providing you with guarantees for the ifs in life. Visit MetLife.com today. David Ruffer will kick it off after the Irish connect on a field goal. Winston and Tardy, the deep men, for the Cougars. Short kickoff. Winston. up and spun down as he crosses the 25-yard line by Zeke Mata. So now trailing 3-0, Washington State takes over with nine and a half to go in the opening quarter. And in a lot of ways, that's a win for them to hold the Irish to three because yeah. the first quarter has been disastrous for them. It's just been miserable. 115 to three. And, you know, most teams talk about getting their opponent into the fourth quarter. I, I think the Cougars today just have to get the Irish into the second quarter. But you just can't have a bunch of three and outs, which they had last week against Cal. Jeff Tool surveys the Notre Dame defense on first down from the 26. Puts it in the air in a screen pass. Caught by Solomon. Pretty good tackle there. Well defended by Notre Dame as we take a look at our Adidas starting lineup for the Irish. And uh, no change up front. That defensive line, as you've noticed in recent weeks, much better against the run. Brian Smith had the game-saving interception uh, last week against Boston College. Al McCarthy among the national leaders with those five interceptions. Yeah, we may see some uh, some pure zone from the Irish defense today, which we haven't seen all year long. Time. Trying to slow down the passing game. 
Hit in the backfield is Mitts and stopped for a loss in the play. Penetration by the front uh, four, and Darius Fleming then puts the hit on Mitts. And that's one of the changes they've had is, is moving Darius Fleming to a defense event more than just on passing downs. It was in a little stunt that stunt, time. Keep riding inside, get absolutely cleanly on Mitts. But he was start the season as a strong outside linebacker now. He's most of the time putting his hand on the ground and getting after the, the ball carrier reporter. So on third and seven, the Cougars desperately need a first down here. And from the shotgun, tools pass incomplete off the hands of Jeffrey Solomon. Well, Tom, that's two series, two three and outs, right? It's just one of those things. Last week against Cal in their first quarter, he had four series. Three of them resulted in three and outs. They just have to get some first downs, and they've gotten nothing so far out of the running game. So they're going to have to give it right back to the Irish. Reed Forrest is on to punt. There's Golden Tate. And I think Tate would like this artificial service, sort of a fast track for him. Better punt this time from Forrest. Their catch called for and taken by Golden Tate. It was a 43-yard punt that time by Forrest. No return, of course, on the fair catch. Irish will take over, holding a 3-0 lead in San Antonio. Leading 3-0, the Irish take over at their own 28-yard line. Just over eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Two Washington State possessions have been three and out. Second possession for the Irish. Crossing pointing out the middle linebacker so they can set their protections. Hands it to Robert Hughes. Washington State's changed their defensive lineup a little bit. Three down linemen, four linebackers. Brought in uh, Myron Beck, number 13, as a as a uh, weak linebacker. I was played pretty well for him in the uh, pass game in particular. See some of the scores from this uh, Halloween slate of college football. Trevor Robinson is the injured Irish player, the Notre Dame right guard. Trevor Robinson has really actually played the best when you think about all the offensive line for the Irish. Watch number 78 on the right. Oh, yeah, right on the back. Yeah. Is. That's why, you know, the offensive linemen always wear those knee pads or uh, knee braces on both their legs. There's a lot of bodies flying around there in there, Tom. And I'm just surprised it didn't happen more often. And Trevor Robinson told us a couple weeks ago, you know, he never takes his helmet off. And uh, he goes to the sideline and... Bad limp as he hits to the sideline. This is a guy, as I said, of, you know, all the offensive linemen they've had a much better year than a year ago. Trevor Robinson's played the best. So Dan Wanger will replace him. He is the backup guard and center. The 6'4, 302 pound senior from Coral Springs, Florida. This was a starter last year at center. Here he is, number 51. center and Eric Olson moves over to guard. Ball play to Hughes. Right. Golden Tate can have an effect on a on a game or a play even without a passing play. I mean you worry about him so much you're playing double coverage on Golden Tate and it just for that cover two what do you do you either throw the ball to tight end or you run it. So you're saying if you do, if you had a friend that was a defensive back and you want to scare him on Halloween, you dress up as Golden Tate. Absolutely, that, yeah. That, if you were a defensive coordinator, you would. There's Golden. You see that there's there's uh, two guys covering him, two guys deep, two safeties deep, and it's just a soft inside where you can run the ball. Olson back at center is Carson hands to Robert Hughes, and Hughes picks up the first down before he's depth at about the 40-yard line. First down for the Irish. You know, Tom, I know the Cougars have some, some poor statistics defensively, but it's not all their fault. They are on the field way too much because the offense hasn't generated enough first downs. Blitz there by Mattingly again. Good read by Hughes. Good strong run by Hughes. Took and about four to get him down. The first to hit him, Mike Ledgerwood. So Clawson with a first down. Ball just shy of the Irish 40-yard line. And Notre Dame leading 3-0.
Toss it to Pettis. Plenty of time. Now it breaks down. And back to the uh, line of scrimmage. Just short of it, actually. Dan Spitz will get credit for a sack. Loss of about a yard on the play. Well, that's only the eighth sack on the year for the Coopers, but it was great coverage downfield that forced the sack and allowed Spitz to get there. 16th sack given up by the Irish. Now, the last few weeks in particular, the Irish have given up a lot of sacks. Gave up five against USC. Yeah, 13 in the last four games. So second down, 11. Tossin lines up for the shotgun. Take down here, getting double coverage once again. Hughes has a hole, lowers his head, and pounds to the 46-yard line. Maybe the 47, an eight-yard gain for Robert Hughes. Xavier Hicks Jr. made the uh, tackle and was punished in doing so. You know, I, I've seen enough of Charlie Weiss's play calling over the last few five years, Tom, to realize if, you, if the team plays a lot of cover two, you're going to see a lot of this, and you're going to see a lot of the tight end. Brings up a third down. Third down and three for Clawson. Calling out the protection. Zips it into traffic and it's incomplete off Rudolph, who had three men around him. Yeah, good stop by the Cougar defense. Third and three, and again, Charlie Weiss this past week actually worked with Rudolph on his route running on plays like this, particularly in the end zone. Number nine in the middle of the field. You're, you're right, Tom. He was covered. Once so again, Andy Mattingly have a nice little game here. We're going to play on that ball. So Dan Turk is on to punt. Turk uh, retaining his punting job. Simone is deep for Washington State. Fumbled the snap, the low snap, and then kicked it off the side of his foot. Oh, and bounces out of bounds. That was a, a ghoulish punt. But you know, Turk. Had not been punting that well, so Charlie Weiss opened up the competition again with Eric Moss, but he said Turk clearly won in practice. Back to the drawing board, an 11-yard punt. We're back in the Alamo Dome. So far, the Texas fans not that impressed. Notre Dame has a field goal, looked bad, and then a poor punt. Big opportunity here for Washington State. Jeff Tool, the freshman quarterback, in the shotgun. Two possessions. Three and out on both possessions for the Cougars. Blitz comes from Notre Dame. Two of the sack. Ethan Johnson. Well, that's the 36th sack given up by the Cougars. There were too many blue jerseys and not enough white ones. The Irish, their, their X's and O's are bigger and faster. Ethan Johnson, one of the, it's only the third sack by an interior player by the Irish this year, but to us, absolutely no chance. Johnson came free for his third sack. Teo was coming on a blitz. So now, second down to 19. And trouble again for the Cougars. They give it to Tardy. And Dwight Tardy, the running back. A nice year senior from Walnut, California, gains 11. Excuse me, Tom. Nice run by Dwight Tony, and they need some of that. Just some positive plays. Even if they play the field position game here in this first half, they got to stay in this game early. Tony has a chance of being their leading ball carrier for four straight years. And our first down line brought to you by Xerox. And the Cougars need to get past that a few times. Well, they've got nine yards to do it. It's shown, but back off. Tardy has time and his receiver, but I don't think he has the first down. Yeah, well, what if you run a, you know, it's second, third, nine, and you run a seven-yard route? Tony Thompson made the catch, the tight end. Well, Tony Thompson, nice catch there, but again, you've got to get past those first down markers. You see the markers, see it's third, nine. Watch where he catches this. Settled down there just short. Brings on the punt team again. So, again, three and out for the Cougars as Forrest, under pressure, kicks a good one that will go all the way into the end zone on the fly. It'll be a touchback, which isn't so good perhaps, but at least it prevented Golden Tate from getting his hands on the ball. Well, not much going on at the Alamo Dome so far. Three nothing Irish. Trick or treat. 
Riverwalk, downtown San Antonio. It was like a bowl game down there in the days leading up to the game with the Cougar fans and Irish fans cheering and razzing each other a little bit. You look quite popular too, I understand. You mean on the... Yeah, on the river. looked like an obvious interference, and there's the fly. Yeah. Golden Tate held by Terrence Hayward as he made his break. You know, he's a tough matchup for anybody. Terrence Hayward's only 17 years old. Pass interference, number 23 defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. That is Hennigan, our Big East officiating crew. And again, Hayward, uh, you know, really has a tough matchup with Golden Tate. I think he's going to be a good player. Uh, easy call with the left hand there. Yep. Had a hold of him as he made his break, so the ball in the air, that's interference, and then Tate jawing a little bit, and... Uh... Well, but like so many players, Haywood is playing because of injuries, and he really wasn't the start of, uh, when the season started. Boston from the 30, finds Hughes, and Hughes will take it a yard short of the first down, tackled by Stripling. Jimmy Clausen, Clausen has really processed information well and made good decisions. That, that's one that a couple years ago we saw him as a freshman. He would have forced something downfield, nothing there. Again, that deep, soft coverage, just check it down, pick up eight yards. So here's the Wildcat formation now. That's Clausen setting up as a wide receiver to the top of the screen. Golden Tate will receive the direct snap. Tate fakes the handoff and keeps, and Tate nearly broke free. Stopped at about the 44-yard line after a gain of 10. Hoffman Ellis made a touchdown-saving tackle. He was just about off to the races. Yeah, you know, just a, a real good, powerful run by Golden Tate. You know, oftentimes you think of wide receivers as going down easy. Good pull, almost a good block by Dan Winger. But, you know, he just does not go down easily. And I think I said at the very beginning of the show, he's got two distinct talents, catching the ball in the crowd and then making people miss when he gets the ball. Wildcat again. Looks like the same play. And Tate still on his feet. Breaks to the outside. Finally ridden out of bounds by Terrence Hayward, the last line of defense for the Cougars. Was that the same exact play? Three times in a row. You know, and it's, this is a guy, Golden Tate, that has the kind of ability and speed to be able to do it in the passing game, and today we're seeing it in the running game. We saw it a little bit in the Purdue game, Tom, remember a couple of weeks ago. But he's at a high school halfback from uh, Tennessee. He came, made the adjustment to be a wide receiver, which he has really made this year in particular. But you still see how fast and how difficult he is to tackle. 33 yards on that one. Wildcat again this time. It's Robert Hughes to take the direction now. Looks like the same play. Just an off-tackle play. And he's to the 10-yard line. So Paul Duncan and Chris Stewart on the left side of the Irish offensive line are creating some huge holes. Those two guys on the left side have done a very, very nice job. Watch these guys in here. Should have put a little smaller circles on there, Tom. But the Stewart, 59. You see uh, Sam Young as well. Kind of shifted him over to the left tackle on that play. By the way, Trevor Robinson taken off the field on a part of ice on his ankle, and Dan Wagner remains in. He's playing at guard. Again, the Wildcat. Hughes takes the handoff, keeps it again. Keep running it till they stop it, and that time, not as much damage done. Well, Sam Young, we've seen him move from number 74, right tackle to left tackle now. And he has been actually clearing the way for Robert Hughes and Golden Tate. Big weight advantage for the Irish. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Notre Dame threatening from the seventh. Jimmy's just going to let it run out. So timeout taken by Notre Dame with 21 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Now critics agree Football Night in America is the place to be. Join Keith Olbermann, Dan Patrick, Coach Dungey, and the entire Football Night in America team every Sunday night at 7 Eastern, only on NBC. 
these guys in the Irish team keep playing like they are, they're going to have to make that decision whether they're going to be seen on Football Night in America next year. Talking about Golden Tate in particular, number seven, Jimmy Clausen, eligible to enter the NFL draft. Both are juniors, but would be eligible to enter the draft. Uh, and, and Jimmy, and you mentioned at the top, Jimmy Clausen has to be considered when you start talking about the Heisman. Yep. We're getting close to November. It starts tomorrow, and then that's when the Heisman talk really starts heating up. And he's a deserving, deserving guy to at least be in that mix. Right. Second down. Six yards to go. They can't make a first down. Chase from the pocket. Scrambling, delivery, wide open for the touchdown, Camara. All alone at the back of the end zone, the defense lost him. Clawson bought a little time and found him for the touchdown. I'll tell you, Jimmy Clawson is one of the best things he's done this year is really kind of move around in the pocket and keep his eyes focused downfield for somebody coming over. That time it was Duval Camara. Was open as well, but a couple years ago, Jimmy would have thrown that one away or maybe had been sacked. Camara's first touchdown reception of the season as Talish attempts the extra point. And it's blocked. That's good. It could be a two point play. It could be a two point play. Look at Rudolph Hall. Wachaku still on his feet. Oh, just stopped. At about the five-yard line, chased down by Mike Rickon, the tight end, 251 pounds. A great block, and then watch a coup, man. He, you know, it would have been two points, maybe it would have been a big turn of lifts. Yeah. yeah, after that, they needed any kind of lift they could get. Terrence Hayward, I think, blocked it, and watch a coup picked it up and nearly got it back the other way, all the way to the end zone. Take a look at that block. Hey, this is, I think, the third kick that has been missed by the Irish this year. They're right from the interior line, and then Wachiku. Again, I tell you, it was a hustling Mike Ragon. And you just never know what a hustle play like that might be the difference in a ball game. But nonetheless, they, you know, the Cougars needed something positive to hang their hat on. Well, they got the that block at least. Yeah, yeah, they got the uh, conversion block. Nearly got the two points out of it. So 9 nothing Irish with just 14 seconds left in the opening quarter of play. David Ruffer will kick off. And Tardy and Winston will be deep for the Cougars. This is Tardy to field it at the five. Has a little room and used his blockers well. Stopped short of the 30-yard line by the special teams of the Irish. Yeah, let's go back and look at that touchdown and watch uh, Duvall Kamara come, uh, come open in the back of the end zone. He's out here at the top. You see in the slot is Kyle Rudolph. They're both open at different points of this route, but what really made the play was Jimmy Clausen just kind of buying some time in the pocket. Let's see, three defenders go over the co cover the tight end Rudolph. That leaves Kamara wide open, eyes downfield. Got a lot of zip on that while he's on the run. We talked at the very top how dynamic Jimmy Clausen has been this year. Another good example of that. First down play for the Cougars, a keep by Tool. Jeff Tool has the first first down of the game for the Cougars on a keep from the shotgun that gained 14 yards. And that will bring the first quarter to a close with Notre Dame leading Washington State 9 to nothing. We'll return after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football in
the Alamo downtown San Antonio and start the second quarter with Notre Dame leading 9-0, but a spark of life for the Cougars. They blocked the point after touchdown. Then they picked up their initial first down of the game on a run by quarterback Jeff Toole. Toole chased and sacked all the way back to the 30-yard line. Kerry Neal was the first to get there and joined by a lot of his teammates. Yeah, there was a feast back there on a quarterback. And again, there's just nothing downfield for Jeff Toole. Harry Neal, Darius Fleming, which over here, here. Anti-tail on a blitz as well. And there wasn't, uh, there were three blue jerseys that had a chance of making the play. Lost a loss of 11, so second and 21. Mitts. Only a yard or so up the middle. You see number 69 there in the middle of the screen. That's their center, Kenny Alfred, and uh, didn't get much done there. But really a, a quality, quality player for the Cougars, a guy that really could play for anybody in the Pac-10. Their offensive player of the game, six out of seven games. Good in his academics, too, a fifth-year senior. And the, unquestionably the leader of the team, in fact, is Coach Paul Wolf who also played center, so knows something about it, says, I can't tell him anything. He's a much better player than I ever was, and said, unanimously, he is the leader of this team. No one would ever say anything back to him if he were to criticize him. Tua wings it down the field, and it's incomplete, intended to for Johnny Forzani. Forzani may be the fastest man on the Washington State team, who was a basketball player in Canada, but has the football genes. His dad in the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame and just learning the game of football, but he does have some skill. Yeah, it's only his second year of football. His high school didn't even play football. So once again, Reed Forrest will have to punt it to Golden Tate. <laughs> and off the side of his foot, takes a good Washington State bounce. Oh. Throw it off Tate and a free ball. And the Irish recover again. You know, they fumbled, what was it, four times against, I think it was USC, and they recovered all four of those. And today they've had two fumbles and recovered both of those. This is one that really Golden Tate probably should just yeah. stay away from. Should have indeed. And uh, he's lucky Jamoris Slaughter hustling down yeah. to recover it for the Irish. So he's a baseball player. It was a short hop, but unfortunately he's a center fielder, not a shortstop. <laughs> Didn't have his glove on either. <laughs> okay. So the Irish will take over at their own 29-yard line, leading Washington State 9-0. Theo Riddick makes his first appearance at running back for the Irish. He's carried seven times for 43 yards on the season. Here is Riddick trying to turn the corner. Hurdles one man, and then caught and dropped at the 35-yard line. Well, Charlie Weiss was talking to us about Theo Riddick and why he wanted to play him in this game. He's our fastest running back. He said on this surface, this artificial surface, we wanted to use that speed. Blocked there by Kyle Rudolph. Here's the athletic move. The guy that went, you know, he's made the most of his opportunities. You said only seven carries, averaging over six yards per carry. So the freshman from Manville, New Jersey, gets six yards on that one. Here he is again. the shoe tops by Mike Ledgerwood after he gained 14 right to midfield, just a yard short of midfield. Yeah, yeah, really good offensive line blocking by the Irish. There are some huge holes. You see 74, Sam Young coming around the corner. Good block by Chris Stewart as well. And Ledgerwood just kind of hanging on and around his ankles for dear life. And this offensive line has had a nice first half, Tom. Look at the yards per play. And the Irish on the move, leading 9-0. Second quarter from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Riddick gets a yard to midfield. Tackled there by Turpin. Nice. Toby Turpin. Yeah, good play by Toby Turpin. You know, one of the plays there, one of their defensive tackles, and they've kind of cycled a number of guys through there because, because of injuries. Lost, I don't know, two or three defensive ends, and guys like Turpin have had to play both defensive tackle and some defensive end for the Cougars this year. And Paul Wolf was saying, hey, if we can get through this year, build on something. We've got a lot of young players, but they really do need to show some, some improvement. Now he was saying they were 
showing improvement now. Needed to show it in this game, too, to continue to advance. And then a lot of good young players and a lot of good young first seniors. Crossing's pass underneath to Hughes. Hughes squirts inside the 40-yard line to gain 13 on that pass from Jimmy Clawson. Another patient play by Jimmy Clawson. Well, he had to be patient a week ago, didn't he, against Boston yeah, College? They, 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 actually, the last two games, USC and Boston College played real soft zone coverage about him. You see, there's no one around Clawson. Had only just eight sacks on the year, and so, you know, if you can't get some pressure on him and you don't cover guys like that, it just... It's like practice. Empty backfield here. With five wide receivers for Clawson on first down. Clawson misfires on that one as he was hit. As he delivered the pass, it was intended for Riddick. He goes out of bounds. The Riddick, we've seen him in the running game, and now the Jimmy's give him a little instructions, lined up as kind of a wide receiver. He thought he was running an out route. He was running to go. And then the pressure on Jimmy Clausen. If he gets some pressure on any quarterback, you're going to have some issues. That was uh, Andy Mattingly, again, who's had a nice first half. Really had a nice first half for the Cougars. Second down and 10. Washington State has managed only 10 rushing yards. And Irish already over 100. Play action fake and Clausen. Plenty of time. spot and camped in it finally stripping able to chase him down but a gain of 17. the other thing that these irish receivers have done better this year is come back to the quarterback as jimmy clausen has kind of run around and deval camara coming off his best game a week ago when he caught seven passes kind of sees jimmy kind of settles down give me the ball and then stays in bounds that was his career high those seven receptions against the eagles Coverage on Golden Tate this time. And off to Hughes. Looks like it was going to open up for a moment, and then Hicks closed it down in a hurry. That, that was a touch, but for a real good play by Xavier Hicks, the free safety. Unfortunately, the safeties are having to make too many tackles, the Cougars, in this first half. And again, you see, you see this defense, they're, they're just on the field way too much. The Irish really lead in the time of possession. It's 14 minutes to about six. Wow. Here's the Wildcat with Tate to receive the snap. Fake it, kept it. Spot off the tackle and still on his feet. Golden Tate for the touchdown. single week he's done something special not so much in the receiving game today he had two cougars hit him squarely and he's still so strong that he bounces off in and gets in the end zone eight receiving touchdowns two running touchdowns on the year for golden tate that was the second and went from 16 yards out and tausch had his last point after block tausch gets this one up and through Receiving or running, here's a 16-yard run, bouncing off two would-be tacklers and skirting into the end zone. <laughs> one of my find favorite a, holidays. Find a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just take one, though. Take several. Yeah, there he is. A little boat in the best uh, costume tonight. So far, that guy's winning. Oh, Colonel Sanders is here. <laughs> and Winston await the rougher kickoff. On the two-yard line, Tardy. And it's Gordon that makes the hit. Leonard Gordon on special teams for the Irish. 
Notre Dame up 16-0. 922 left in the first half. MedLife is providing tonight's aerial coverage. Visit MedLife.com to learn more about the blimp program's 20-plus year history. MedLife guarantees for the if in life. 9.22 second quarter, 16-0 Irish. Washington State from their own 26-yard line. Play action fake by Tool has a man wide open. And a nice catch, shoot top catch made on the play. By his uh, fullback. Byers, right, for 11 yards. Here at Byers. Get ready to come of left slot. Really got the same play that Notre Dame opened up with as they threw it to Kyle Rudolph. So good, another first down for the Cougars. All the way out to the 40-yard line. First down for the Cougars. Here's Tool from the shotgun. Fake. No hands to Winston. I almost had something big right Just there. about broke it for a big gain. Alex? Hey, Tom, well, getting a first down for Jeff Tool is exactly what he needs for his confidence. He's been looking very much like the freshman that he is on the sideline. He's been quiet and in between every series getting coached, sometimes on pretty basic things, like looking for the hot read or keeping his eyes downfield. Coaches reminding him that they're just doing what they do in practice and trying to calm him down. Remember, this is a young guy making his only his fourth start. Freshman from... Fresno, California, stands in the pocket for a dangerous pass intended for Simone and uh, deflected and incomplete. Well, we had a nice conversation with Jeff Tool though, this week. What a what a nice kid, 18 years old, but incredibly mature. And, uh, you know, they, they wanted to redshirt him this year. They really did. But, again, because of injuries, they played three different quarterbacks. He's going to be their quarterback of, of the future. They've had some good ones at Washington State. And I think Jeff Tool will be ultimate. Taking a few lumps now, but that'll pay dividends in the future. On third and long. Tool under the rush. Flag is down. The pass incomplete. Rifle across the center intended for Thompson. And they have no answer for the blitz. The uh, Cougars have no answer Illegal for the Illegal formation. Number 75 offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Tyson Pencer. Tyson Pencer. But again, just there's just too many blue jerseys coming cleanly. You know, watch, you know, Brian Smith, number 58, jumps right over the theoretical blocker. That was Winston. So Reed Forrest in punt formation. Fifth punt in five possessions. Fair catch. And Golden Tate takes it at the 20-yard line as we go to Jimmy Ross in our New York studio. All right, Tom, time for a GE game break. Wake Forest in Miami and Winston-Salem. Wake jumps out to the big lead, but the Hurricanes storm back. Just over a minute to play, and it's Jakari Harris to Travis Benjamin. All about the Benjamins. Miami's first and only lead of the game. Harris, three touchdowns, third straight loss for Wake. All right, Jimmy, and... Uh... Throughout college football today, uh, a lot of teams uh, had leads that looked like it was going to be an upset before the favorite came back to win. Watching that Indiana Iowa. Yeah, what about that? Wow. Good for Iowa found a way to win the fourth quarter again. Especially they trailed in all but one game. High formation here with Aldridge, the fullback, Hughes, the tailback, and Clawson two pass and gets it to his tailback, Hughes. Robert Hughes going into the secondary and. Somersault into the 35-yard line. That's a 15-yard gain. Alex Hoffman Ellis finally made the play. Just a kind of a really precise game. Robert Hughes has his third catch of the day, Tom. You know, we've seen him run it, pound it inside. But Clausen just being coached so well to check it down if you either have pressure on you or there's nothing downfield and let a guy like Robert Hughes pick up a first. Seven and a half minutes to go. Golden again. There is pass complete. And Golden 
Takes three to get him down, but they finally do as he crosses into Cougar territory. A gain of 21 yards. Then he looked like he's, he's just having a lot of fun yeah. when he's playing. I guess when you've had, you know, that much success. Right there in the slot. And, you know, Charlie Weiss is doing a great job. Good block by Mike Ragone up top, too. Of just getting him the ball quickly. And he's part receiver, part running back. And uh, nobody's found the answer for him. Nope. Nobody. Nobody in the country that they've yeah. played so far. And we've seen him double teamed. I even saw him triple teamed one, one game. He still caught a ball for a touchdown. Balls and under center on first. Faked it. Passes it. It's complete to Ragone. And the big man upended. Ball came loose on the contact with the turf, so no fumble. And Ragone, the tight end, making his first reception of the season. Throwing him a little bone for that hustle play, chasing down tell you, on the, the uh, blocked uh, point after. Just watching Paul Duncan over here. Watch Paul do his thing and protect the quarterback. It just, uh, you know, he had a rough day against USC a few weeks ago, but this, this, this uh, protection that Jimmy's getting is allowing him to have a lot of easy throws. The ball did come out. He's there to make the play. That's three fumbles they recovered himself. Fisher said it was down uh, by when he hit the turf. So. Robert Hughes gets the call and stacked up by Spitz after another nice game. First down, Irish. Tom, we said it a couple times. Defense on the field too much for the Cougars. Yeah. On offense, they've had five series. Three of them have been three and outs. Hunted all, all five of those times. It's just really rough on your defense when you have to be on the field. The time of possession has just been remarkably in Notre Dame's favor. And Washington State's going to take a timeout. Timeout Cougars, the Irish driving again, already leading Washington State 16-0. That's uh, Chima Wachiku on the sideline with an ankle injury and out for at least the rest of the half. Injured when he made that race down the field trying to return a blocked point after for two points. Also Brandon Jones starting cornerback injured and out. So Washington State getting backed up in the secondary and Paulson's attacking it with a pass to Kyle Rudolph. Flying down late. Looks like he has uh, enough for the first, but we'll check out the penalty. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Penalty is half the distance from the ball. Down. We had more penalty yardage and rushing yardage last week than Cougars did, so things just aren't going around. Kyle Rudolph split out as a wide receiver. They kind of detach him from the line of scrimmage from time to time. Looks like Hicks had the face mask late. Yeah, it did come in late. You're right. Usually when they sprint. Well, it, it could have been called on uh, Air, Justin either, also. Yeah, Air Justin. When they split them out. They usually throw them those jump balls. Here's the Wildcat formation down to the red zone. Robert Hughes will take the snap. Hands to Tate. Golden Tate. They defended it well that time. Yeah, really kind of an un unbalanced line on the on the left side for the Irish. Then there's a couple times they'll take Sam Young and flip him over. There's another guy over here you can't really see, but they, they then they, they use both tackles on the left side, Sam Young and Paul Duncan, to give him an opportunity. Now, I think Golden Tate may have been trying to throw that one. He looked like when he first accepted the handoff that he might be trying to set his feet to throw it, but thought better of it. Clawson has hit all four of his pass attempts on this drive. High formation now with Hughes the tailback. Give it to Hughes. Pounds down to the one yard line and stops short of the goal. Hey, Robert Hughes is just a big old guy <laughs> that can just pound. Yeah. But you know, he's pretty light on his feet. You know, he's a like, dancing bear kind of guy. I remember Jerome Bettis was a little bit like that. Big heavy guy, but. Could make something happen. Good block by Kyle Rudolph there, too. And he's a pretty nimble guy for, who's 200 and almost 40 pounds. Third down and goal. Hughes for the touchdown. this 
year. You see that with eight plays, 80 yards. They've had a long, lot of long drives. That is not a costume. That's really the left of And so Tausch with a point after. And it's center. As the Irish go up 23-0 on Washington State, Robert Hughes with that rushing touchdown. He has four of them now on the season. This one, and the Irish go up 23-zip. Back in San Antonio, 23-0. The Irish are dominating on the scoreboard and really in that time yeah, of possession. Yeah, look at that, 18 and a half minutes to seven. And that's, it's really been the inefficient offense of the Cougars that have not really generated enough first downs to keep their defense off the field. Rutgers kickoff. Taken by Tardy. And kickoff return uh, out across the 30-yard line. Where Washington State will put it in play. Washington State with only two first downs already in this uh, first half, while Notre Dame has uh, racked up 13 first downs. At the very beginning of the broadcast, was saying, watch over Golden Tate and Jimmy Clausen. Yeah. They have not disappointed. Golden Tate in particular has done it more as a runner tonight than he has as a pass receiver, but this is a guy that's, you know, one handoff or one catch away from 60 yards. Tough spot for the young Cougars to come in and play Notre Dame and getting banged up now even as the game has progressed. Yeah, and, and, you know, I think for them at one and six is just being able to show some improvement. Hang in there, try to make this a competitive game in the second half. Good run here by Hardy. So Dwight Tardy with a uh, nice run of 20 yards, the biggest play so far for the Cougars. Dwight Tardy has been a consistent run for them, and Jeff Solomon, number 12, watch the block that he's going to make outside. And if your wide receivers can make blocks, you know, six and seven yard gains become 12 to 15 to 20 yard gains. And Jeffrey Solomon got it done there. So the Cougars cross into Irish territory. And the handoff to Mitz. Oh, and he just tripped up. He nearly broke it for a touchdown. Manti Teo got a hand on his foot. Still, it's a 12 yard gain. And back to back first down runs. Yeah, and two really good runs. One by Torrey, that one by Mitz, and a good change of place, pace, which gives Jeff Tool maybe some opportunities in the pass game. Maybe a little play action pass where we can have some time in the pocket, which he hasn't had much in this first half. You'll see him get up. This guy's a big, powerful guy. Almost 230 pounds. You see how thick his right. legs are. And when he's a sophomore, a guy that they uh, they think has a big opportunity. And again, this is what Paul Wolf was saying. Hey, we've had a lot of injuries. Yeah, records one and six, but we're making some progress, he says. And they think next year, with all these young guys they have back, freshmen and sophomores, with a lot of experience, they have a chance of doing a lot better, being competitive in the Pac-10. Tool from the shotgun. Scrambling free, and he has some room to run. There's a fly down, though. Up short of the 30 by Sergio Brown. It's hard to imagine or remember, but this Washington State program has been pretty good right. over the years. They had a stretch where they won 30 games in three years. and Won 10 as recently as 2003. Just six years ago, they beat Texas in a bowl game. There's no penalty so for a block in the, in the past. Pack. Third down. Couldn't hear what the call was, but you remember that season, Tom. <laughs> but they have had a lot of success. Yep. Couple of Pac-10 championships, four times to the Rose Bowl, nine bowl appearances all time. So there is some tradition in the Palouse, home in Washington, and a timeout taken on the field. Gives us a chance to remind you that uh, coming up will be the Notre Dame halftime report. Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio with all the scores and highlights from college football's top 25 action. Peter King and Mike Florio will have the latest NFL news, and this should be interesting to all the Notre Dame fans. Tony Dungy is going to join them and break down Notre Dame quarterback Jimmy Clausen. Uh, 
his strengths and weaknesses. There haven't been too many weaknesses this year. No, it's, it's been kind of a quiet game for Jimmy Clausen by Clausen standards, but very efficient first half. But I'll be curious to see what Coach Dundee think, Dungy thinks about Jimmy. And of course, uh, perhaps contemplating coming out. Coach Weiss says that he will consult with all his contacts in the NFL and advise Jimmy at the appropriate time, which would be the end of the season. Uh, this is really an important uh, drive for Jeff Tool, not just for this moment, but kind of for this season and for his confidence. Third down, stands in the pocket, his pass is caught. Down at the 15-yard line by Tony Thompson. What a catch by Tony Thompson. Their tight end, second catch on the year, inside receiver in the slot. Even though they list him as a tight end, he plays right. a lot in the slot formation. Just a little wheel route, as they call it, beat uh, Gary Gray. 15-yard gain. He's the son of the great Washington State quarterback, Jack Thompson. He wing it when he was up here. In the... Blitz coming here. Hand off to Tardy. Yeah, th this drive really looks much different than we've seen from the Cougars in the first half. They've got a few runs going. Tools hung in there in the pocket, looked down the field. Good catch by Tony Thompson. And what a lift this would give the Cougars and Paul Wolfstein if they get a score here before half. And at 30 left. From the 11. Second down and five. Tool in the gun. Throws for the corner of the end zone. And the fade is caught for the touchdown by Jared Parstetter. What a drive by Washington State. They suddenly come alive. The run got it going. They possessed the ball a little bit. They got a few first downs. Uh, Tool was hung there in the pocket. Nice throw to Thompson on third down. And then he gives Jared Karstetter, who's 6-4, a chance to go up and get it. And the same kind of plays that the Irish throw to Golden Tate. They used to throw to Michael Floyd when he was healthy. It's a terrific drive for Jeff Tool. So Grasso will attempt the uh, point after. Well, just before halftime, the Cougars march down the field. Karstetter, number 84, on the receiving end of the Jeff Tool pass. You know, he's just been a consistent receiver for the Cougars for, for two years. And again, Tool did a nice job of throwing it high and letting his 6'4 receiver go up against a 6'1 Robert Blanton. And that's what the Irish have done all year long. And Tool with his fifth touchdown pass of the season. What, uh, you know, really a big, big lift for the Cougars. Now, but, you know, you never leave too much time on the clock with Jimmy Clausen. This is where he's been in, in, in incredibly good. Look at that. Seven plays, 76 yards after the first five drives. They got only 35 total yards. Notre Dame with three timeouts in a minute and 16. And Jimmy Clausen is pretty good in this, these kind of situations. Rooney will kick it off. Riddick and Gallup are the deep men for the Irish. Well, the board says three timeouts. Jimmy actually has two timeouts remaining. Again, some quarterbacks seem to thrive in these moments, and uh, as we mentioned at the top, in the fourth quarter, he's been phenomenal. And here he gets a chance to do some magic here at the end of the first half. So a minute 10 for Clawson to see if he can work his magic. As the Irish begin from the 25. Efficient. He's 12 of 15 in this first half. And a sidearm throw to get it into Rudolph, who makes the catch. Beck covering him well, and uh, Jimmy put it where only his man could get it. Yeah, that's the hard thing about Kyle Rudolph. You can cover him well, and you still don't cover him because he's so big. Nine. Here's the second down, Carson Pass. Same thing. 
Rudolph this time came uncovered and then takes a crowd with him. Still pounding away the 40-yard line. <laughs> Flag is down. 15 yards, five of it with five men on his back. You think Kyle Rudolph knew he was going to have the ball thrown to him a lot today? Illegal formation, That's under 77 offense. 77, Matt Romine's come in at one of the tackle spots for the Irish. And it nullifies the big play and marks off five against Notre Dame. Well, Kyle Rudolph. It's number 77 left tackle. Yeah, moved just a little bit early. He said illegal formation. Illegal formation. Yeah. Must have been real deep. Lawson scrambling free. Looks back, keeping his eyes open, as you said so many times. Riddick stopped by Stripling, the first man to get there, and another flag is down. Late flag by the field judge. And Paul Wolf has to have a little spring After in his step. The play step. was over. Personal foul, number 55 on the offense. That's two on Eric Olson. Two on Eric Olson, two personal fouls. And he's coming over to talk to Coach Weiss, or Coach Weiss summoned Eric Olson over him. Call that a teaching moment? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Eric calls it that. I don't know what happened. The flag was way. Yeah, very, very field. late. Yeah, very late. late. Yeah. It, was, it was dead ball. The play was over. And just when they had something going too in their uh, two-minute drive. Middle of your screen number 55 right there. After the play, was like, yeah, as yeah. it continues, yeah. Field judge uh, with his eyes right on Eric Olson. Good call. So now 29 seconds left, and the ball back at the Irish 20 yard line. Dan, if you're Chris Ball, a defensive coordinator for Washington State, well, you better get a couple guys on the golden tape. I mean, at any time, he, he could take the house. And even two guys. Now they got two guys on him right now. Stand here at the bottom of the screen. Crossing with plenty of time. Underneath the Riddick. Dancing out of bounds across the 25 yard line. Stops the clock with 22 seconds. Real, real soft coverage right now. Three guys. Sure. Very, very deep for the. Cougars. Ball at the 26 yard line. Lawson. He chased and then throws. A good catch. To Camara. Camara. Yeah, wow. he did. It's got his foot down and caught the ball. Camara with a catch, giving the Irish a first down. And out of bounds, 16 seconds left. That's an 11 yard gain. You know, he has really stepped up, Camara. You know, Robbie Paris got hurt. Michael Floyd got hurt. We talked about what a great freshman year he had a couple of years ago, disappeared last year, but he's come on the last two weeks. Big target, too, at 6'5. something out of it. Sprints across midfield into Cougar territory. Seven seconds left and number seven calls Notre Dame's final timeout. Well, they're not quite in field goal range as good as Nick Tausch has been this year. Coach Weiss was telling us a couple of weeks ago that he thinks his range is about 51 yards. And don't forget now coming up at halftime uh, Tony Dungy is going to take a look at Jimmy Clausen, how he stacks up for the next level. Well, you know, efficient today. 17 of 20 in the first half, 189 yards. They had, they're taking away a lot of the deep throws. They're forcing him to be patient, and indeed he has been. 
think I heard or saw Charlie Weiss call 50 go. Yep, they just may get to give one 50s of protection, throw the go route. The, the old Hail Mary works at Notre Dame. They can work in the uh, Alamo Dome. <laughs> it might. We'll see how much of a true home game this is, huh? <laughs> And has hit 10 in a row. Going to try for the big one here. Rolls to his right, winds up and heaves for the end zone. Up for grabs and grabbed by who else? Golden Tate. Did we say he has strong hands? Didn't we say he was amazing? We have seen this every single week. And you know what? When you throw it to him, it's not a Hail Mary. The guy is just so good with the ball in the air. Now, he's only 5'11", but you see how he can leap. And once he gets his mitts on it, he's just going to pull it away from you. His teammates... Tell us that he's like that in basketball, yeah. too, that uh, even though he's not big, that he can go up and get any rebound in a basketball game. Well, they're going to have, they're gonna have a, a review upstairs, which in college football they do it every play. Watch his hands. Watch the height. Guy goes to the receiver. Yeah, I think he's got a catch, and he pulls it away. Even if it's a tie, it goes to the receiver. I mean, perfect position by Air Justin, number nine. What can you do? Well, there's three guys around yeah. him. I mean, as I said, it's not a Hail Mary when you throw it to him. You know, he did it in the first half with the run until the very last play of the first half. He did it as a receiver. So it's under review. So the ruling stands, and Golden Tate has another touchdown. Yeah. And Jimmy Clausen has a big <laughs> smile. Well, would you be smiling yeah. if you're a quarterback and throw a guy into triple coverage? What about Jimmy's arm strength? On yeah, that? well, yeah, he just kind of he, he had, he had a big windup. A big windup, threw it up high enough to allow Golden Tate to go up and get him. Just an amazing season for number 23. Extra point, good. With zeros on the clock. Well, Washington State had a big lift, marching down the field, looking better than they had all the first half, and then disaster strikes in the form of number 23. Golden Tate the third. What a good name for Notre Dame player. Yeah. Three receptions, 82 yards, and a touchdown, four carries, 61 yards. Let's go to Alex with Coach Weiss. Coach Golden Tate catches that ball in triple coverage. What did it look like from your vantage point? Well, we said, you know, we, we max protected right there, and we, we knew that they were going to be rolled over the top, but I just wanted Jimmy to be able to reach the end zone, and I figured if he could reach the end zone, you know, Golden, you know, there's a good chance that Golden would go up again. Penalties almost derailed that drive. It looked like you were pretty disappointed. Uh, say that one more time, Alex. Penalties almost derailed. Yeah, I, I was disappointed because we had something going on that pass to Rudolph. You know, we got the ball into plus territory. Now we're back, back, backed up again. You have a sizable lead now. What do you want to do in the second half differently? Well, I want to, I want to keep some momentum, momentum going right now. That's all I'm trying to do. Coach, thank you, Tom. All right, Alex. Well, this was a thing of beauty. It's the 11th straight completion by Jimmy Clausen. Thanks. <laughs> The Golden Tate. I'll tell you how you keep your momentum going. Just keep it throwing at the 23. <laughs> Pitch and catch. Jimmy Clausen, Golden Tate. What a combo. So the end of the first half, Notre Dame leading 30 to 7. Stay tuned for the Notre Dame halftime report, the halftime performance of the Notre Dame band at NBCSports.com. Now let's go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio. 
Back in San Antonio, the Alamo Dome, where Notre Dame leads Washington State 30-7 as we get ready to start the second half of play. First half of play was, well, Pat, it was a Golden Tate show. <laughs> yeah, it really was. You know, Golden Tate was. Uh, it started out having a big impact in the running game, and then at the end of the end of the half, the, you know, the, the Hail Mary, uh, they said it's not a Hail Mary to throw it to right. him, was just remarkable. The strength of his hands and his ability to go up and get the ball in the crowd, it is, this is the first time we've seen it. We've seen it all year long, and particularly in the last three ballgames. Right. Well, so uh, Golden Tate and uh, Jimmy Clausen will have the ball first when we start the second half. Well, throughout the season, we've been looking at many of the unique things that Notre Dame students and professors are engaged in off the field. And today we look at how Notre Dame's impact is felt not only by its students, but around the world. I was seven years old at the time of the coup in Chile. Growing up under the dictatorship changed my life. It was a time of darkness. The whole country was paralyzed, it was chaotic. People were tortured, killed, and disappeared. I decided to go to Notre Dame because I knew that the Kellogg Institute was committed to the study of transitions to democracy throughout the world, and especially in Latin America. The University of Notre Dame's Kellogg Institute for International Studies is one of the world's premier research centers, bringing together scholars and practitioners to address urgent challenges of democracy and human development all across the globe. Movements are successful if they have great leadership, and leadership is successful if they have good ideas and ways of achieving those ideas. Our task is to go where human dignity is being violated and train the people and the methods to get in there and change the tide. And we've done that in Chile. Prominent intellectuals from many countries have done research at the Kellogg Institute and returned home to make major contributions to building democracies. I've been a member of parliament, I've been Secretary of State of Chile, and throughout this process, the intellectual, the ethical, spiritual, political influence of, of Kellogg has been so important in my life. The return to democracy in Chile has changed people's lives. They are happier. They have better jobs. They have better education. It is a totally new life for millions of Chileans. The University of Notre Dame asks, what would you fight for? Fighting for democracy. We are the Fighting Irish. Second, San Antonio, ready to start this uh, second half of play with the Irish leading Washington State 30 to 7. And inside the Alamo Dome, flag of the United States and of the state of Texas, the uh, band of the Fighting Irish put on quite a show at yeah. halftime as they formed uh, an outline of the state of Texas and played to the delight of the uh, fans here at the Alamo Dome. Well, this is what Paul Wolf would like to see a lot more of this half, some kickoffs. <laughs> Rooney is going to kick it off to Riddick and Gallup. Neil Riddick. Dragged down at about the 25 as we get in without him. Washington State has had to deal with injuries all season long. They've already lost three defensive backs so far on the season, and now they'll have to finish off this game without strong safety Chima Wachiku. He's out for the rest of the game with an ankle. Meanwhile, Paul Wolf felt like his team finally settled in on their last offensive possession, and he said that when they get the ball back, they'll be looking to try to keep that momentum going. You know, he said to us this week, too, he said, Golden Tate's going to catch them. We're just going to keep him away from the big plays. But... Right. Play action fake. Paulson has to throw it away. Nearly intercepted. That uh, breaks a string of 11 straight completions by Jimmy Clausen, who in the first half hit 18 of 21 for 239 yards and two touchdowns. And our first and 10 line brought to you by Xerox. 
Well, Tom, you and I are uh, Heisman voter, voters. Uh, there's a new guy maybe in the picture. I think, you think? you, you got to put Golden Tate yeah, in the right. conversation. You really do. Yeah, he's, he's done it week in and week out this season. This is Robert Hughes. I just think he's done this, too, without Michael Floyd the last right. six or seven games. Michael Floyd went out with an injury against Michigan State, and so everybody loads up on Golden Tate, and yet he still is uh, remarkable, 145 total yards. Rushing and passing as a uh, touchdown rushing and a touchdown passing tonight. That gives him nine receiving touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns on the season. for the first down. Let's go look at uh, Golden Tate, and those strong hands we've been talking about the last few weeks, Tom. It just, uh, just didn't happen at the end of the first half today. So we've been seeing it three weeks ago against USC. Big first down there in the fourth quarter. And see way he just kind of holds the ball away from the defender. The ball never touches his body. Did it again there against Boston College last week. And here against the Cougars, at the end of the first half. Here's Robert Hughes. Alex? Hey, Pat and Tom, you talked about Golden kind of using his hands and holding the ball. And Pat, you really saw it there in that first down that he picked up against USC. It's something that he's really worked on this season. You remember he had two big drops against Michigan. And the wide receivers coach, uh, Coach Anello, said that that was because he was really keeping his hands below his eyes. He's made a concerted effort to raise his hands up above his eyes, and you can really see it when he catches some of those passes. Well, I don't know what he's doing with his hands around his <laughs> eyes, but he's, he's catching everything that's thrown to him. He really dropped a couple early, but hadn't dropped anything since. Drop play, Hughes driving ahead for another first down. Tackled there by Alex Hoffman Ellis, number 43. You see him come up into the foul. There, there's a guy that, like, watch this. There's a few guys like that hardly played any high school football. One season of high school football. A little more of a basketball player. Thought he was going to be 6'8". You know, missed it by seven inches. <laughs> well, just, just a little off. Yeah. So he turned to football, but is it just really becoming uh, accustomed to that game? Defense calling the protection. Going to find the middle linebacker. And then hands to Hughes. Pounds his way into Cougar territory to the 49 yard line. And Tom Alex reported that uh, Wachaku, number 21, their outstanding strong safety, not going to make. We had a chance to talk to him this week. What a, a remarkable kid. We were talking to college football players for a long time, but uh, Chima Wachiku was absolutely sensational. And of course, coming back to his uh, home state to play tonight and nearly had uh, an interesting play as he was injured as he nearly ran back a blocked extra point for two points for the Cougars. Caught by Mike Ragone and what we thought might have been a call a horse collar tackle, but it wasn't. Here's Golden Tate. They didn't let him get away that time, and Tate slams the ball to the turf. That was Hicks that wrapped him up and would not let him go. Hicks is the other safety other than Wachiku that we were just talking about. Wachiku just, uh, just an amazing young man, and uh, you mentioned the injury. He was on the blocked extra point goal for two-point play. Haven't seen him since. A guy, poli sci major, economics minor, wants to go to law school at Stanford or Berkeley. Here's Clawson. Threw it low, and it's incomplete, intended for John Goodman. Pretty good defensive stand here to open the yeah. second half of the Cougar defense. And good news for the secondary of the Cougars. Uh, Brandon Jones, who was shaken up earlier, has returned for Washington State. So. A bit of good news on the injury front. And a stop by the Cougars. Puts Ben Turk in punt formation. We haven't seen him much today, have we? And it will be uh, Simone, who's deep. Or is it Simmons? And, uh, 
Well, Ben Turk had one earlier that was 11 yards off the side of his foot. He just made up for it with that one to the two-yard line. 52-yard punt and no return. Timeout. Washington State's ball when we come back. Meet Tierra, open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Been owned by the Cortez family since 1941. Seats 500 in there. You get the music yeah. at no extra charge with Tex-Mex fare and it bakery looked goods. pretty full, too, didn't it? it did. 500 <laughs> seats taken. With the hot fajitas going by. From the two-yard line and passing from his own end zone, the freshman Jeff Tool is going deep, and he has a man open and just deflected. Intended for the speedy Johnny Forzani. Oh and the ball hanging up just long enough for Robert Blanton to recover and knock it down. If this is another yard, it's another, what, 99-yard touchdown play to Johnny Forzano. He's already had one 99-yard touchdown catch this year. Just a streak route right down. You see he's got Robert Blanton beaten by five yards. Just an underthrown ball. Otherwise, his second 99-yard touchdown catch of the season. Second down, flags will stop it. And procedure. All start, 54 offense. Is All start by Zach ball. Williams. That'll put it back to the one yard line. Zach Williams, number 54. Just moving a little bit early. Paul Wolf. Surveys the field now. Second down and 11 from his own one. Tool goes out of his end zone and has a completion to the 10 to Jeffrey Solomon. Jeffrey Solomon coming off a big game last week when we caught seven. That really coming on in the consistency department, as coaches were saying. And now a little room to operate yeah. and a makeable third down. A yeah, pretty good throw and read by Jeff Tool. Cougars trying to pick up this first down. They don't want to have to punt this deep in their own territory. You know, the Irish have not blitzed much recently. In the first quarter, they blitzed with a great deal of success. Showing it here. It's a handoff to Tardy. Flag is down as Kyle McCarthy makes the play. Short of the first down for Dwight Tardy. And a hold against Washington State. It'll Holding, be declined. 69 offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. So fourth down, and Forrest will have to punt from deep in his own territory. Well, Kyle McCarthy, you know, Tom, you keep calling him uh, Mr. Dependable, and, you know, once again, he's going to make a, another play. He's made really three game-altering plays this season for the Irish against Michigan State, against Washington, and, and uh, he, he's just been always at the right place at the right time. Forrest punting from his own end zone. High punt and Golden Tate draws a beat on it, calls a fair catch, and makes it at the Cougar 45-yard line. That was a 34-yard punt, no return on the fair catch. We'll take a break with the Irish getting the ball back, leading 37. Well, Golden has got that straight line speed. Every time Golden goes out for a pass, you know, the defenses have to worry about him going deep because not only does he, he run fast, but he has good ball skills. So when Jimmy lays it up there, there's a good chance the kid's going to come up with it. Which is what he did at the end of the first half. He laid it up there, and the kid did come up with it. Not, not, not good ball skills. I think Charlie undersold it. <laughs> Great ball skills. Have you seen better? I mean, no, with no, the no. ball in the air for a wide receiver? No. I have not. Hand off to Hughes. Notre Dame starting in Cougar territory this time. First time in the game that one of the teams has started in enemy territory. Clawson looking over to the sideline for the play call. The Irish with a 30 to 7 lead. Do you expect to see Dane Christ? Uh, it, it, you know, very soon. But you know, you think we've talked so much about 
Golden Tate. How about Clawson, 20 20 25, yeah. 244 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Had a string of 11 straight broken, just started a, getting ready to start another one. And does underneath the Hughes, who shakes a tackler, and Hughes is still up till he is pounded to the turf at about the 27 by Hicks. Well, you know, this, you, you, these Irish think about the remaining schedule. They've got, you know, four tough games, I think, remaining, and it's going to be plays like this and patience like this of Jimmy Clausen just taking that check down. And then he'll somehow I'll find a way to get the ball to Golden Tate. But he's been very, very patient. Not a lot of big plays except for that one at the end of the half. But that is exactly what the Cougars are forcing him to do. First down play. And a hand to Hughes. Robert Hughes getting the workout. This drive, both carrying the ball and receiving passes. Hicks and Stripling combined for the tackle. Thanks to MetLife for providing today's dramatic coverage. MetLife has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Seven forty, counting third quarter. Charlie Weiss and Jimmy Clausen with a thirty to seven lead over the Cougars of Washington State. And timeout taken by Jimmy Clausen with the uh, play clock ticking away. So timeout, Notre Dame. They lead Paul Wolf and the Cougars of Washington State 30 to 7. Walk in downtown San Antonio. What a great place for the fans to come enjoy a game. As we said, really a bowl like atmosphere as the Irish and Cougar fans descended on the river walk in San Antonio. And uh, this is something the Irish are going to do every year take one home game and play it at a site off campus. It will be at the new Yankee Stadium, uh, Notre Dame and Army, where the two teams met in the old Yankee Stadium often to decide the national championship in years long past. Neil Riddick gets the carry. You know, now that we talked about Jimmy Lawson being so efficient, this is not the first time he's been in the stadium. In high school, maybe he came down to the American uh, Army All American Bowl, and that was, for me, that was the first step for Jimmy Clausen. He had played in high school football, and it wasn't at the highest level. I say, could he compete with premier athletes who were at the uh, right. Army U.S. All American Bowl? And he did. And then he went on and started his freshman year, and then every year Jimmy Clausen's gotten better. Third down and two here for Jimmy. Backs up into the shotgun. And hands it off to Riddick. Nearly broke free. Hicks grabbed him around the shoe tops and would not let go. Xavier Hicks has had a good day tackling in the open field. Unfortunately, he's the free safety, so he's usually making those tackles after a sizable game. Theo Riddick, Charlie Weiss, really high on Theo, uh, Theo Riddick. And a very kind of red-shirted <laughs> Sierra Wood. He uh, upset. He thought he had his first oh, touchdown. Yeah. College touchdown. Xavier Hicks has just had good open field tackle again by Hicks. Clausen winds up and throws to Goodman. And he's bumped out of bounds just short of the first down. First catch of the game for John Goodman. Remember Charlie Weiss saying to us about John Goodman a couple of weeks ago, a lot of like Jeff Samarja in his estimation, a great receiver for Notre Dame. and. Charlie's uh, first couple of years. And, and Smarja used to catch a lot of these places in the slot formation. Team number 81, good block by Camara as well. S silky smooth. And right. It's his fifth catch of the season. The sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Well, single coverage on Golden Tate down here. Well, they're going to run it instead. And Hugh Riddick picks up a first down. You know, Theo Riddick has his reputation really being fast, but he's he's a pretty strong runner, too. Only, only 185 pounds. Riddick, you know, kind of, you think of him maybe as a perimeter player when Charlie Weiss says how fast he is, but uh, he's gotten some tough yards in the uh, last few weeks for the Irish. Toby Turpin wrapped him up that last time as he... Takes a rest, and the goal line that unit is in with 
Robert Hughes at the setback spot. And the offset eye, and Hughes, yeah. met the crowd, didn't he? Yeah, a couple of guys from Washington State either just dove over the top. A couple of linebackers, I think, just dove over the top to put the stop on him. Ledgerwood, I think, one of those guys. And Toby Turbin made a play. Watch the guys playing linebacker. There he is, <laughs> right over the top. Right. Mike Ledgerwood. So you know what? If, if you're a coach and you, hey, you're down 30 to 7, you're looking for something to, oh. you know, say, hey, a positive moment, that's just one of them. Still playing hard. Yeah. That's what they're looking for. And they got it. Second and goal. This is, this is going to be a fade up top. No, he's right, baby. No, it's dead. It's a sack. That's Turpin. He's had a good series. Yeah. Toby Turpin and uh, Jimmy gets up and limping, limping again. He's, he's got, got that turf toe. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and Charlie Weiss wanted to get him out of this game in about mid-third quarter. And he was going to throw a fade to Kyle Rudolph. They changed the coverage, and he had to hold on to the ball, and then took the hit. There he's looking right. He sees the double coverage. And what a play by Turpin. Just crawling his way to the legs of Jimmy Clausen. And Clausen will limp to the sideline in a Notre Dame timeout. Well, certainly with a lead like this, you don't want to get your quarterback hurt any right. further. But it's a, that turf toe injury is something that it's not going to go away till the season's over. Well, he got hurt but the first want, time. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to aggravate it yep. in a game in which you have a 30 to 7 lead and driving for more. It was against Michigan State that Clawson initially injured it on this kind of freak play. It got bent backwards. And it's been bothering him ever since. It seems like at least once a game he aggravates yeah. it. And he goes back the next week and throws two or three touchdowns, yeah, right. no interceptions. But Dane Christ, the backup quarterback who's going to have a big career, I think, at Notre Dame, warmed up there as Jimmy came over. It looks like we're going to see Dane. There he is, the sophomore from Canoga Park, California. He's played in three games. He's hit 8 of 14 from the air, 61 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. Did not play last year. Big old guy. Yeah. 6'4", 233 pounds, and he's uh, and, and got some quicks. Prep All-American at Notre Dame High School in California. Charlie West wanted to get him some meaningful moments tonight, and indeed, he will get those. On third and goal. Chris fakes one way, goes the other way, sets up a screen to Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph. Great tackle by Andy Manning. That, okay. was, that was set up oh. for a touchdown. There were three or four blue jerseys. You saw two white ones. And Andy Mattingly, as we said earlier, circled this game for a, a year ago to play in. Made an incredible tackle. Fought through some blue jerseys to make that play. Kyle Rudolph over here. Just a little thing. See three blue jerseys? You know, two offensive linemen missed Andy Mattingly. So Tausch is on to attempt a 23-yard field goal. Already has tied the Notre Dame record, hitting 13 in a row. This one is good. New record holder. New record. The freshman from Texas. The eyes of Texas are upon him. Nick Tausch has set the Notre Dame record with his 14th consecutive made field goal. It's 33-7. Back at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Nick Tausch has just kicked his 14th consecutive field goal, and he will handle the kickoff duties subsequently, setting the school record. Well, what, a, what a plus he has been this year for the Irish. That one is not a good kickoff, though, as it goes out of bounds. So you'll hear it from the coaching staff now after he got the uh, kickoff duties after setting the field goal record. But you know, they, they, you know, for for Charlie, the the kicking game has been a little, you know, uneven over the last four and a half years. But now he's got it settled there. And as we take a look, and that's uh, Trevor Robinson, the uh, right guard for the Irish, who went out with a injury, got rolled up on his leg. And uh, we also mentioned Shima Wachaku from 
Washington State, their outstanding strong safety, who was hurt in that first half as well. He's kind of reappeared. Won't be playing anymore, not in pads. So after the kick out of bounds from the 40-yard line, the Cougars will put it in play with Jeff Tool still at the controls, the freshman quarterback. Neither team has committed a turnover today. Fake and roll. Tool looking downfield, nobody home, and throws it away, and it's intercepted by Blanton. Just tried to throw it away and didn't throw it far enough. And should have thrown it out of bounds. Right. Instead, Blanton just picks it off. You know, I was looking at Johnny Forzani, and we mentioned how he's an inexperienced wide receiver. When your quarterback is scrambling around, you have to work back to him. Forzani really didn't. But that's one tool probably, well, not probably, he should have thrown a mile long. So just as I announced, no turnovers. Yeah, you're bad luck, Tom, in a lot of ways. And uh, Robert Blanton, pretty good catch by Blanton. Yeah, one-handed. Yeah. The guy's, uh, he's been up and down, started some this year, benched for a while, came back and started, played pretty good there. That's his second interception of the season. So Dave Chris continues to quarterback here. With the starting offensive line. Whoops. Short hop, Golden Tate again. The baseball player <laughs> likes him in the spring, not so much this time of year. Well, he's a center fielder, though. You know, Dane, Chris got that, uh, his first real game experience versus Purdue. And uh, even though he's a big guy, he's pretty nimble, had a nice 16-yard run against the Boilermakers. And, you know, it, this is a big moment for him because if Jimmy were to go come out, you know, this kind of playing experience is really important for Dane Chris. Aldridge and Hughes in the eye behind him. And it's a handoff to Hughes. Robert Hughes made a nice move. Finally written down just short of midfield. Well, he's over 100 yards, is Robert Hughes. That one was 19 of it. 116 yards right now. And all of his yards, Tom, have really been come, come up the middle. But they haven't necessarily been tough yards. There's been some pretty big holes. Good block by James Aldrich. Good block by Dan Wenger. I mean, he's not getting hit until he's already had a five-yard gain. I know it. So now from the 48-yard line, Hughes again. You know, the other guy to get out right now is Golden Tate. You know, Jimmy came out. I would get Golden Tate out. 220 remaining in the third quarter, up 33-7. Chris looking to the sideline for the call. And our first down line brought to you by Xerox. Andy Mattingly made that last tackle on uh, Hughes. He's Again. getting up there, isn't he, in terms of... Yeah, he's had a really solid game as linebacker for the Cougars. Hughes breaking clear. I mean, no one's touched him until he's, what, seven, and eight yards down the field. And then he lowers his head and gets a few more. 16 in that case before Hicks and his friends can hop on his back and ride him down. There's a flag you see on the play. Robert Hughes, how'd you like to be uh, one of his horses and see Robert swaggering up? <laughs> no, yeah. please. He's got 12 or 15 horses. Holding, number nine on the offense, 10-yard penalty. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 59 on the offense. It's that penalty will also be enforced, 15 yards. Too happy about those. Chris Stewart and Kyle Rudolph, the yeah. two guilty parties. Watch that run up the middle again. Wanger did a nice job. So did Olsen. And then he just kind of keeps churning and churning and churning his 240 pounds. Now they call the push on on uh, Chris Stewart there. I, you could have left that one alone. Well, they already had a hold on Rudolph. We'll step it off against the Irish. And by the time they uh, set it down, it'll be at the 34-yard line. Nice to see James Aldridge get another chance in uh, his senior year. And lead blocker kind of doing anything Charlie Weiss asks of them. He's playing fullback right now. 
Here's Dane Chris to pass. Whoops. And again, short hops Golden Tate and shows his displeasure by his body language. Yeah. Not and, good. Uh, for Irish fans, maybe they're saying, Jimmy, well, please stay. Your senior season. Dane Chris played the real good league in Southern California. You just mentioned Notre Dame High School. Great competition. Some of the best in Southern California. Had a just a big career as a passer and a runner at Notre Dame High School. John Goodman in the game comes uh, wide to the left with uh, Tate in the slot to that side. As Dane Chris surveys the Cougar defense. Hand off to Hughes. Hughes back to the 45 yard line. That's a gain of 11. It's now 131 yards for Mr. Hughes. Got the start with Armando Allen not uh, dressed. A minute to go in the third. Alex? Hey, Tom, Robert Hughes, pretty impressive. He's coming off of a concussion that he suffered one week ago. Remember, he was hit really, really hard on fourth and goal last week from the Wildcat. He was kind of woozy coming off the field, dazed and confused, but quickly flew through all the cognitive tests and made it back on the field tonight. Turk with a punt to Simone. He makes a fair catch at about the 15-yard line as we go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio. Oh, indeed. Well, 28-24. Yeah, tough. Another yeah. tough loss for Connecticut. Absolutely. Well, pretty good ball club. Well, Notre Dame has them later in the season. Final home game. Carl Winston gets the call. And carries it close to the 20-yard line. See number five, Manti Teo, the maybe at least part of that tackle for the Irish. A guy who's really come on as a and once they gave him the starting nod, kind of yeah, led had, the defense in tackles. Had 10 tackles against Washington and has been averaging about nine a game. Yeah. And a lot of tackles for losses. That's what they, the athleticism they were hoping for, Tao. He's, he's coming on. Final seconds of the third quarter. State will get one playoff. Flag is down as Carl Winston carries. So the quarter uh, against Wazoo. Holding. 54 on the defense, or on the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. The third quarter will be extended. Okay. Zach, Zach Williams with the hold. Didn't please his head coach. Yeah. This is an offensive line, including Zach Williams, have had a lot of injuries this season. Paul Wolf there, who can in on a defensive penalty, but it can end on an offensive penalty. And the third quarter is ending. Well, At least we think so, or maybe not. You've got the rule right, though, Tom. Well, in any event, <laughs> well, let's play one. Yeah, Washington State, again, one of these second and long, third and long, which they have been in most of most of this game. So we got an untimed play coming up. Tool's going to have a quarterback draw and not going to get away with it. Ian Williams made a nice little play from his nose tackle position. Ian's come on the last couple weeks. And that will be the end of the third quarter. It ends with Notre Dame leading Washington State 33-7. Back to San Antonio after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football in prime time on NBC. A field goal scored in that third quarter, so we start the fourth with Notre Dame leading Washington State 33-7. Jimmy Clausen apparently aggravated that turf toe and is out of the game. He's about going to come out about that point anyway. Third down play. Jeff Tools pack is caught. Simone. Gino Simone. Nice game for the Cougars. Kyle McCarthy chases him out of bounds. 14 yards on the play. Just short of the uh, first down mark. I, you know, they're bringing him to the punt team. I, I'd say go for it. Right. Thought, down 33-7. Thought, thought they might, but yeah. Simone just about two yards short. So they gave him a chance. Well, why not go for it here? One of
once again to punt. Surprisingly, Golden Tate still in. There he is. Fair catch called by Tate. You see those strong hands even on punt returns. And there's just no bobbles in anything he catches. And for more on Jimmy Clausen, let's check in with Alex. Tom, well, Dane Christ taking to the field right now is Jimmy Clausen. is kind of limping around the sideline. He did re-aggravate his turf toe. He did it on third and goal on the sack. And gosh, you guys, he's such a competitor. It just killed him to have to come out of the game uh, in that position in the game. Well, you know, we've seen him, Alex. He is such a tough guy. I mean, he had beaten up his first two oh, years well. in his quarterback yeah. position. Chris with a hand to Riddick. The Ridden down at the 45-yard line. That's an 11-yard gain. This is a very good offensive team. You know, and I don't think about the Irish. I mean, they, they protect the football. Only five turnovers all year long. I mean, they're getting a lot more production in the running game, not just today, but this season than yep. they have. And then they have the big play capability with Golden Tate. They're going to get Michael Floyd back maybe as early as next week and Kyle Rudolph. So you put all those things together. That's a really good offensive football team. Draw play. Riddick. Theo not flat on his back at the 50 yard line. Still wanted more. Michael Floyd, we just talked about him. He's, he's averaging 27 yards a catch this year. There it is right there, 27 and a half. But, uh, and uh, broke his collarbone against Michigan State. Maybe back for Navy, if not the following week against Pittsburgh. To be cleared by the doctors, and then Charlie will leave it up to him. From midfield, Chris fakes and rolls to his right, being chased, and uh, nearly picked off. Deflected incomplete. Chris does not look very sharp nice in deflect. the passing game. You're right. A nice deflection by Xavier Hicks. We've talked about Xavier Hicks and making so many tackles. That's this time in the passing game. This free safety number 26, Hicks, gets that hand up. You know, perfect timing by Hicks. It was really actually covering a different receiver. Came back into the play yeah. to knock it away. Nice job. Good awareness of where the ball was to knock it away. And it's third down. Chris looked one way, the other now being chased. Gets away, and that pass will be no good out of bounds. Riddick caught it, but it was out of bounds. So Christ. But this is, you, you see why you want your backup yeah. quarterback to get meaningful moments. I mean, if something were to happen to Clawson, he couldn't play in one of these last four games. You want a guy that's had some experience under fire. Yep. And so many teams play that starting quarterback too deep into wins, I don't think. But Charlie Weiss had a plan, hoping to get a chance to play a lot today with Christ. Turk's punt goes straight up. <laughs> That's not good for no, him. No, it's not good. And then we'll be down. It covered uh, 19 yards. He had an 11 yarder earlier. Ouch. Not far from the Alamo. Notre Dame leading Washington State. That's correct, right, Tom? Yep. Yeah, they come bowl eligible. Record that. There's Charlie Weiss. Reading the riot act to his players. It's been uh, a workmanlike, not brilliant performance by the Irish tonight. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be happy with anything about this tonight. No, he's leading 33 7. And we were saying there uh, in the timeout that uh, with a win today, the Irish will become uh, bowl eligible to be their sixth win, but it's been a workmanlike performance, right? It has. It has been as spectacular except for, you know, a couple of golden tape plays. And that's probably the reason that Charlie gathered yeah. his players around him and well, I think was not that of, happy. Yeah, they just lost a little bit of focus. But, they, you know, the last four games, even though Navy lost today, that's a tough one for the Irish. Navy, one of the best rushing teams in the country, Pittsburgh, Having a terrific season. They've got a, run, a freshman running back, Pittsburgh, that's just awesome. 
Connecticut, that's not a guaranteed win at all. And Stanford, I want to tell you, that is one physical team that well, they, they are. play out at uh, on the farm in Northern California. So Washington State takes over. Jeff Tool on first down. Hands off and nothing doing for Winston. Spun down by Capron Lewis Moore. Tool looks one way and then is attacked and sacked by Darius Fleming. Fleming with his third sack of the year. You know, this, this is a guy, they, they, they well be better as a defensive end yep. than as a linebacker because he has been their most disruptive player as a defensive end. Right off, you know, good outside moving comes inside on Pencer. And once again, Jeff Tool has nowhere, nowhere to go. You know, that this defense is beginning to come on too, you know, as well. They stopped the run the last couple of weeks. They're much better in pass defense today. Third sack for the Irish. Tool in trouble again. Ball is three. Picked up. Steve Feiler, the man that knocked it away from Tool. And then Alfred recovered for the Cougars. Well, one play, it's number 45, Darius Fleming. The next play, it's number 46, Steve Feiler. If it looks similar, it is. Right off the, he comes all the way from the backside to make that play. So these guys are generally linebackers, but they're putting them in as defensive ends, put some more heat on the quarterback, and Filer and Fleming are doing a heck of a job of doing just that. So on fourth down and 30, Forrest will pump from his own end zone, and the deep man is Goodman. So Golden Tate not in there, it's Goodman instead, and a nice punt by Forrest. Goodman backpedals to the 35. Looks for a little room, trying to pick up a block or two. And he's taken out to about the 45-yard line. 55-yard punt by Reed Forrest, and then 11 yards on the Goodwin return. And coming up next Saturday, 2.30, Eastern time starts for the Midshipmen and the Irish. That is a hard game to get ready for in one week, playing that Navy option. Boy, how many times have we heard uh, defensive coordinators talk about that? Oh, yeah, you'd love to get him with a, with a week off, you know, get two weeks to prepare. You get the Irish get home at 4 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. It's even with the time change. And off to Riddick. Leo Riddick gets back to the line of scrimmage and a half yard more. Hoffman Ellis made another tackle for the yep. Cougars. Hoffman Ellis coming on for Washington State. She had a staph infection a few weeks ago, had surgery on it, just kind of really getting back in shape. First down line brought to you by Xerox. Deion Walker in the game for Notre Dame for the first time today. Riddick made a nice move. Spreading down the sideline before Hoffman Ellis gets him out of bounds again. 24 yards for Theo Riddick, but there's a flag back upfield. Remember we talked about some of the power runs by Theo Riddick, but this is what Charlie Weiss has been talking about, his speed and his moves in the open field. And he put a juke on a, uh, one of the defenders that... Uh, Yikes, just went uh, fake one way, went the absolute other, and there was no one there. There's the move. Yep. On uh, Justin, I believe it was. Then uh, Theo was a little gimpy as he came back upfield. Play nullified by penalty, and Robert Hughes ran out on the field to take his place. And Riddick said, nope, nope, I'm staying out here. Hughes has rushed for 131 yards tonight. Dane Crisp fires across the middle, snagged in mid-stride by Goodman, racing for the end zone, and the touchdown! Now that was a heck of a throw. I mean, he threw a couple into the dirt, but that's a heck of a throw. The Goodman in the slot. And, you know, just a little post route, well, you know, just one of those frozen ropes. Perfect lead, 
And the last time John Goodman scored a touchdown was right in this same place when he played in the Army uh, All-American game. First Notre Dame touchdown. It was a 64-yarder from Dane Christ. It's his first Notre Dame touchdown pass. Yeah, that, that was a really sharp throw by Dane Christ. Tausch. High snap. Moss got it down. Tausch kicked it through. What a big play. First career touchdown pass for Dane Christ. First career touchdown reception for John Goodman. And Notre Dame goes up 40 to 7. Dane Christ in his high school career threw 33 touchdown passes with four interceptions. Just threw his first Notre Dame touchdown pass. As Ruffer kicks off for the Irish. Carl Winston on the return. And a nice move to get away from the first man. Crosses the 30 to the 31 yard line. Mentioned uh, the U.S. Uh, Army All-American Bowl and uh, Dane Christ had a very nice game back just a few years ago. Where is number 10? I guess he was going to do uh, uh, Tom. Michael Floyd. Yeah. Well, those two guys are going to have a, a few more hookups in their careers as well. He, he really stands firm in the pocket does Dane Christ one of those just a you know strong in the pocket throws with conviction to his pass picked off by Williams Ian Williams deflected it to himself and has the interception well you know last week you know he had seven tackles which was a career high for us he's and we mentioned just a moment ago he's really kind of come on and played pretty well the last month but these last two games in particular, he has done a great job of getting penetration and then making some plays. A little stunt move. Kerry Neal's coming inside. That's, you know, that's an athletic move for a guy 310 pounds. So Notre Dame takes over now. 27-yard line of the Cougars. Chris handing off to Jonas Gray. And Jonas Gray gets his first carry. He's the 5'10", 220-pound sophomore from Pontiac, Michigan. That's his 27th carry of the season. Mike Ledgerwood, the Cougar tackler. Well, we said before, this Irish team so much deeper in the, in the running back position than we've ever seen during Charlie Weiss's reign there. With Armando Allen didn't play today. He's here, Robert Hughes. And Theo Riddick, Jonas Gray. I mean, four legitimate big-time running backs. And now what looks like a very capable backup in Dane Chris. Second down. Fumble. Picked up by Gray. And then tackled back at the 35-yard line by Travis Long. Yeah, a loss of eight. Okay, when you have that many good running backs around, you get a few opportunities. You can't drop the ball. Yeah, that's right. Just absolutely dropped the pitch. And he was thinking about getting to that corner of the defense, didn't secure the ball. He put the ball on the ground again, maybe three or four times, but recovered every one of them. Toma, Walker, Evans, young receivers in the game with young Christian quarterback. He lost the football as he went down, and it's recovered by Washington State. I think Dane Christ. Got hurt. Mattingly recovered it, and Chris is still down. It was a very, very awkward fall that he had. So a rare Irish turnover. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end of the play, it was just a really awkward tumble by Dane. Yeah, just and he knew immediately something yeah. was wrong. Turpin fell on the back of his ankle, it looked like, right there. Mm. And then it kind of turned as he landed on it, landed on it as well. Yeah, look there at that move.
Well. So Chris to the sideline, greeted by Jimmy Clausen. And in comes Evan Sharpley. Evan seems like he's been there, what, 10, 12 years? <laughs> well, he has. <laughs> this guy's an interesting guy. And he is. That's but first, Washington yep. State will take over after the fumble recovery. Only the sixth turnover committed by Notre Dame this season. Draw play. Mitts on the run. And close to the down marker, just a little bit short. David Kozlowski makes the tackle for Notre Dame. Well, if you're Paul Wolf, do you think you have some things to be positive, upbeat about, Tom? I mean, I, I think their defense at, at times played well. There's a couple of really good players, uh, plays by Andy Mattingly in particular. But again, I think the offense just has to control the clock enough. There's another nice run by Mitz. He can point to that drive just before halftime and say, look, here's what we're capable of doing. Yeah. Uh, because it was a beautiful drive. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, but, you know, you look, think, look, look at all the possessions they have had. 11 possessions. Punter getting a lot of work. A couple of turnovers. And just one touchdown. One drive, Tom. You can't really call it a drive with just four plays, right? One drive of more than four, four. plays. Grant Christ being uh, helped. On the Notre Dame sideline. Tardy. And uh, the Notre Dame reserves with some sloppy tackling. Jamoris Slaughter finally makes the stop for the Irish. Another first down for the Cougars. 12 yards on that run. Yeah, nice quick run by Dwight Tardy. Talk about how consistent he's been. You know, coaches love that. A guy that uh, has been their leading rusher the past three years. Has a pretty good chance of doing it this year. Good blocks on the left side by Penser and Williams. Kenny Alford, the center. The most valuable player again. Tools in trouble. Might need to get rid of it and complete the pass. It's to Blackledge. David Daniel Blackledge with his first reception of the game. Tom, we talked a little bit about Kenny Alford, the captain leader of this team. Just uh, a guy that, uh, interesting guy, English major, likes to read, likes to write. He's finishing the seven-part series of Stephen King novels, collects uh, old vinyl records. He's an interesting uh, student athlete. Second down and six, Tool. Hands to Tardy. White Tardy. Run again, Zeke Mata, the tackle, but not until he had 19 yards. He looks pretty fresh, doesn't he, Tardy? He does. Again, right up the middle, he ran left off the left tackle. There was a big hole this time right up the middle. Watch B.J. Guerra, number 72, make a real good block. Right tackle, Hannum makes a good block. He just cuts off that. Some Hannum just kind of washed his guy down into, into the defensive front. Some careless tackling by the Notre Dame backups, too. Tardy, give him credit. He shook a couple of those Irish would-be tacklers. So keep it going. Tardy again. Right on time with that carry. <laughs> I, I just knew it was coming. I, I knew it. Couldn't help yourself, could you? Alfred and uh, he had a, the unusual distinction in 2004 being the homecoming king, <laughs> even though he was playing football. There it is, Tom. Kenny King and Mary Store. Pause to take a picture. You, uh, you never made it. You, you were just homecoming prince. You never made it all the way to King, did <laughs> no. you? A long way. I wasn't even a Duke. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, he was kind of embarrassed about that picture. Fade for Karstetter. That's his second of the day. He has two touchdown catches from Jeff Toole. It's kind of turned around for Notre Dame because they throw so many of those fades to their big, tall, wide receivers. And 6'4", Jared Karstetter has done it twice. Payback is fair enough, huh? Absolutely. And Jeff Toole, little inside move, and then right over the top. Slaughter just kind of stumbled. Good drive again, really led by Dwight Tardy, who had a big uh, series rushing the ball that time. So Grasso to attempt the point after, and it is good. Well, the second nice drive of the day, this one against the Notre Dame backups, but it has the same payoff. Touchdown pass from Toole to Karstetter. 40-14. Look at Evan Sharpley, who is set to go into the game for Notre Dame. 
They lead Washington State 40 to 14, and Rooney to kick off. Oh, inside kick, maybe. Maybe. Booted oh, away, and Toma, Robbie Toma, deep man for Notre Dame. Toma trying to get to the outside. Oh, slam down hard right at the sideline. Great special teams coverage by the Cougars. That was Anthony Houston. I saw a flag There down. is a flag sitting right on the 15-yard line. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 17 on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, they called it on Houston who made the hit. Unnecessary roughness. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah, helmet, helmet to helmet. To helmet. Boy. Yeah. You know, that's uh, that was that was just a bad hit. Yeah. And you know that's one of the things the Pac-10 can look at and uh, actually give him a more severe penalty next week. Definitely a helmet to helmet. So Evan Sharpley takes over now. Sharpley, who has a history degree from Notre Dame, back for his fifth season. Remember, he started a couple of games back in 2007. Pitch it to Joe Gray. Gray taken down at the line of scrimmage by Stripling. Well, Evan Sharpley, uh, you know, he's had an interesting career as a baseball player at uh, Notre Dame and a football player. You know, started some uh, before Jimmy Clausen got there. First baseman for the uh, Seattle Mariners. Yeah, played Notre Dame baseball and uh, was drafted by Seattle. Played in the rookie league in Arizona and had a pretty good season. And from now, Tom, a student teaching over at uh, John Adams High School in South Bend. Gray with another short game. Kevin Sharpley hoping to be a coach and teacher someday, teaching uh, geography over there at John Adams. You know, he's, he's been their scout team quarterback, but uh, we don't know exactly what's happened with Dave Christ. He may be elevated to the backup quarterback, and of course, Jimmy Clausen has that tender toe, so Evan Sharpley, his football career may not be over here at Notre Dame just yet. Barry Gallup and George West are the receivers in this play. That's Gallup in motion. Sharpley hands it off to Gray. Jonas Gray breaks free and into Cougar territory. Down to the 47-yard line. Nice run by Jonas. He had covered 14. Hoffman Ellis got him. Jonas Gray kind of making up for that bobble pitch he dropped a little bit earlier. Primarily second team offensive line, but they're doing a nice job. Braxton Cave, I think it was Hick Cave in there, doing a nice job. Okay, there he is, 52. George West making a nice block downfield. Yeah, this is some valuable time as you build depth for the, not only the rest of this season, but next season as well. Approaching the three minute mark. Whistles blow that one dead. Ball start. Ball start against the Irish. Couldn't hear the number. The first time we've seen Mike Golick in this year. Number 57 in on the offensive line. Uh, that name rings the bell around <laughs> South Bend. There he is. Sharply under center on first down. Handing to Jonas Gray. Alex? Hey, Tom, a quick update on quarterback Dane Christ. He's been taken to the Notre Dame locker room because I've been told they want to get a closer look at his knee. It was his knee that he injured a little earlier in this game. That's the play right there in which he was injured. He worked on it there on the field before taking him to the locker room. Approaching two minutes to go in what will be Notre Dame's sixth victory of the season, making them officially bowl eligible. As Jonas Gray dancing his way for a couple of tough yards. And another flag. Was it a flag or no? It was just hanging out of the official's pocket there. Well, they may be bowl eligible, but I think they have, uh, well, we're going to get a little break here first. We'll get into their bowl scenarios when we come back. 
timeout taken by Washington State. Jimmy Clausen watches from the sideline as Notre Dame is up big. Two oh two left in the game from the Alamo Dome. Notre Dame home game played at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Third and 13 for Evan Sharpley, who will pitch to Jonas Gray. And Jonas Gray will be stopped short of the first down, which likely means that the Irish 33 first downs in the game, that's three short of the all-time record of 36 set against Army in 1974. Notre Dame with 33 first downs to 10 for Washington State. Well, Charlie Weiss told Alex Flanagan a couple times this year he's tired of the close games at the end, remember? With five straight. Right. Well, he, a little more comfortable win for uh, the Irish today. Although some some tough injuries. Trevor Robinson, Dane Christ, Jimmy Clausen banged up again. And playing a tough, I think, tough Navy team next week. To get back at 4 o'clock, they go right to the offense. Play game, offense. And Notre Dame calls a timeout, just down. letting the clock tick away. And they called actually delay of game, so they moved them back five yards on the delay of game as they let the clock tick away. And now in punt formation, the Floyd and Jimmy Clausen hoping they can hook up next week in the Navy game if Floyd has cleared the play. What a remarkable recovery that would be. Turk with the punt to Simone. That's a bounce, and it will bounce into the end zone for the touchback. Well, Pat, you've been talking about it. Next week, the Navy midshipmen will come to Notre Dame Stadium. First time since that. Notre Dame, of course, with a big edge of the series. It will be the 83rd meeting between Navy and Notre Dame, one of the longest running rivalries in all of college football. And to me, one of the most interesting games for us, Tom. We see them every two years, and, uh, you know, the game just means so much to those Navy players. You guys, Those guys were recruited to Notre Dame and all that. And... Uh, they don't, you just can't play any harder than those Navy guys do. Navy upset by uh, Temple today. That was their third loss of the season. Here is Winston out of the backfield with a nice game for Washington State. Tripped up, but has a first down. As MetLife providing our dramatic views of San Antonio tonight. MetLife provides coverage of major sporting events, but also providing you with guarantees for the ifs in life. Visit MetLife.com today. That's Jeffrey Solomon. What about uh, young quarterback Jeff Toole? How do you assess? It's tough to tell yeah. today because he was often running for his life. But. Under yeah, under duress. But you know what? Just by talking to him this week, I know he's got the maturity maturity about it. I mean, he he seems to be having fun. He was saying he was having a blast in spite right. of the record. Kind of oozes leadership, but it has been uh, tough. For him. And that'll put him over 100 yards passing as he uh, tosses it. Complete to the 40-yard line to Thompson. The Irish, too. They Remember the last two weeks, they had given up a lot of big chunks of yardage in the passing game. Really didn't see that much of it today. Some of that was because of the excellent pass rush by the Irish. Swing that pass complete to Winston. He'll be out of bounds. And just a, a, a word about Tony Thompson. Wearing number 14 when, of course, that was his dad's number, Jack Thompson, the great quarterback of Washington State in the NFL. It had been retired permanently at Washington State, but Tony said uh, when he was a senior, when he was a senior, would it be all right if I wear your old numbers? Dad said, okay, and there he is wearing number 14. Yeah, good story. He, he uh, actually was being recruited by Paul Wolf for Eastern Washington, but they didn't offer him a scholarship, so he said, but if I'm going to walk on someplace, it'll be to the team I've loved all my life. That's Washington State. Did walk on, and now as a senior wearing his famous father's number 14 jersey. Quite a nice story. Yeah, and quite a nice scramble there by Jeff Toole. Well, Jeff's got some, some wheels. It's one of the reasons he got the, uh, the starting job over a couple of other quarterbacks. They played three different ones. Toole got his first action against USC and came in and played pretty well. And you know what? Didn't get a whole lot easier for Jeff Toole next week. They play Arizona, who's had a very nice season as well. 
Washington State will take a timeout with 11 seconds left, which draws a chorus of boos, but it gives us a chance to review uh, the performance of some of the Irish players. Clawson was 22 of 27, 267 yards and two touchdowns. Golden Tate, four receptions, 82 yards, including a touchdown. He also had four carries, 61 yards and a touchdown, so added up eight touches for 143 yards and two touchdowns. And for Robert Hughes, a nice night. Had a touchdown run and gained 131 yards on the ground tonight. So some of the Irish stars coming up with big games against Washington State. Yeah, indeed. And so it's, uh, you know, Charlie will not be happy with the performance, even though it's a very comfortable win. I mean, I think he was upset with some of the uh, penalties, some right. sloppy plays, some sloppy tackling by the second team. But I think at the end, I think the biggest concern is Dane Grist. I mean, uh, Jimmy Cross is a little banged up. What is the health of Dane Grist? We'll probably know that for the next couple of days. But you know, workmanlike, taking care of business, which in the past, wasn't always the case. Yeah, indeed. Here's two. Throws it away. Stops the clock with seven seconds left. Well, Paul Wolf is just going to survive the rest of this season. There's people up there in the Palouse that I, all fans get impatient at some point, but, you know, if you he needs a few more years, and if these young guys actually improve, um, interesting season for them next year. Thing in his favor, I think, is that they do have a bit of tradition to build yeah, on right. from the past. <laughs> Tool heaves downfield as far as he can, and hits the turf and stops the clock with two seconds left. Forzani was the intended receiver. So barring a penalty, one play left. Jeff Toole said to us earlier in the week, you know, he knew being a freshman, Notre Dame was going to come after him. Yeah. Everybody has. He says, I just have to learn, make some, make some adjustments, play better next week. Coming off a big game of Cal last week, uh, there's some learning moments for him today, too. And the final play of the game will be a Notre Dame sack. Sacked by Notre Dame is their fourth of the game. Looked like Patty Mullen will get credit for it as Jimmy Clawson and teammates celebrate some of the backups getting some playing time and some productive playing time at that. So Notre Dame wins it at the Alamo Dome, 40 to 14 over Washington State. A little concern about some of the injuries which will be assessed in the days to come before the Irish go back to South Bend where they will host the Midshipmen of Navy at Notre Dame Stadium next week. 41 minutes time of possession for the Irish today. I mean, just really controlled it. Let's go to Alex. Coach, you come away with this uh, from this game with a sizable win. What's the biggest takeaway for you? Oh, the, I was a little disappointed that we didn't play better in the second half. You know, when you're up 30 to 7 in the halftime, I wanted to, you know, you know, be sharp coming out, come out of there in the third quarter. And then, you know, try to get some other guys in there and get some action. We were able to do that, just that, you know, I, I thought our execution lacked a little bit in the second half. Looked like Jimmy just re aggravated his toe, but what can you tell me about yeah, your you know, Jimmy could have gone back in, but I figured it's 33 to 7, and there's three minutes to go in the third quarter. And, you know, he's, playing with, he's been playing with his turf toe. I wanted to get Dane some time. I thought it was uh, definitely the, the smart thing to do. All right, we'll find out more about Dane Christ, Tom. All right, Alex. So Notre Dame wins it 40 to 14 to go six and two on the season. Be sure to go to NBCSports.com right now for Notre Dame postgame coverage, including live press conferences. And don't forget next week, the Navy midshipmen pay a visit to Notre Dame Stadium. Game time will be 2.30 Eastern. Right now, except on the West Coast, it's your local news, followed by Saturday Night Live with host Ryan Reynolds. So for Pat Hayden and Alex Flanagan, Tom Hammond saying so long from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, where Notre Dame has beaten Washington State 40 to 14.